An Interview with Baby Campbell By Maya Pundit In your autobiography, there are very few references to your personal life. Can you tell us a little more about yourself? Well, I wrote about what my community experienced. The suffering of my people became my own suffering. Their experiences became mine. So I really find it very difficult to think of myself outside of my community. Let me tell you, there were so many women around us. They were determined to get their children educated because their baba had told them to do so. So our women enrolled their children in schools. Now, they were ordinary agricultural laborers. Where could they get the money for paying fees to the English school? In those days, there were no concessions for the backward castes, schools did not receive any grants from the government. But our women used to find ways of overcoming this hurdle. One woman had to pay 90 rupees as admission fee for her two sons in secondary school. Where was she to get this money? It was the rainy season. There was no work even in the fields. So there was no money. She could Euro trademark tea talk about this to her husband. He was a construction worker. He would have put an end to their Sansa Euro trademark education and turned them into laborers working for a contractor. Her relatives too were poor, there was no way she could borrow any money from them. Then she got a brainwave. They had saved some jowar for the rainy season in a big cane container. When her husband left for work, she called her sons, took out all the jowar with their help and quietly sold it to a merchant. The money was adequate for paying the fees. When her husband came to know of this, he, of course, thrashed her. Besides, they had to starve throughout the rainy season. But she did not allow her Sansa Euro trademark education to suffer. They passed. Their matriculation examination and later on even went to college. Then, there was another woman who faced a similar problem. She too needed money to pay the fees for her Sansa Euro trademark education. But there was nothing in the house. Then she remembered an upper caste Marada girl, the Padala Euro trademark S daughter in law, whom she had known since her childhood. Both belonged to the same village. She thought of a plan. She went to her friend and said, A Euro, I have a problem, can you help me? I have to go to my Nisia Euro trademark S wedding. But I do not have even a broken bead to wear. How can I go to the marriage without wearing any ornament? A Euro trademark now her friend was quite kind. She said, A Euro, oh, Theta Euro trademark S not a problem. Don't a Euro trademark T you worry. Here, take this gold necklace. Wear it for the wedding. You can return it to me afterwards. A Euro trademark the pottle girl took off her necklace and threw it into the woman a Euro trademark S hand from above because she could not touch her mahar friend for fear of pollution. Anyway, this woman took the necklace and straightway went to a pawnbroker. She got a tidy amount for it. That took care of the fees. But now there was the problem of returning the necklace. She thought and thought about it without sleeping a wink the whole night. Finally, she remembered an old aunt of hers who had recently returned from Mumbai after having worked there for many years. Generally, such women were known to buy gold with whatever extra money they earned. She was bound to have a few gold ornaments. This aunt, who was a widow without any children of her own except for one nephew, stayed all by herself in her small hut. She went to her aunt and, after having chatted with her on this and that, said, A Yuramashi, I a Euro trademark V come to see you because I feel quite worried for you. You know that nephew of yours. He is a rascal. He knows you have some money, a few ornaments. Do you think you are safe from him? You know what I mean. Suppose he decides to do away with you one night. Whom can you call for help? A Euro trademark it was evening. And the house was situated in an isolated corner. There was no one around for miles together. The old woman realized that it was really foolish of her to keep her gold with her. She was quite overwhelmed by this display of affection on part of her niece. She continued, Mashi, you are the only one we have got. Why keep your gold ornaments with you? Give them to me for safekeeping. And don't a Euro trademark to you worry, you will be much safer without them. A Euro trademark the old woman gave all her gold to her niece. Next morning, the woman returned to Fulton, went to the same pawnbroker, pawned her aunt a Euro trademark s gold and retrieved her friend's necklace from him. Then she went to the friend and returned the valuable necklace to her with much gratitude. Such were our women. So clever and committed. They listened to Baba Saheb and did whatever he asked them to do. Were women different from men in this respect? And why did they believe in Baba so much? It was only because of women that education became possible for us. Generally men would say, A Euro why put our son into school? As if he is going to become a teacher or a clerk. Eat a Euro trademark s better if he starts working as a laborer like me. At least he will earn a little money. You will ruin us with this madness. Sending children to school indeed. But women paid no heed to such talk. Dr. Ambedkar had said, A Euro you believed in God. You gave away generations to him. Now give me a chance. Give me this generation. Make sacrifices for twenty years. Enroll your children in schools. Go hungry if you must. But educate your children. After twenty years, you yourselves will come and tell me what is better Euro, God or education, A Euro trademark. These words of Dr. Babasaheb Ambedkar touch the hearts of our women. All the highly educated men that you see today are from that generation. They are all placed in high positions. But their children have not done so well. Maybe it's because of the new affluence. They are engrossed in that. What was the contribution of women to the Dalit political movement then? How did women participate in it? 
Well, more than half of the people in the movement were women. And how did the men respond to this? What was their reaction? Let me tell you. It so happened that on most occasions, activists who came for public meetings in the Chadi were from Mumbai. The entire community gathered to listen to them. These activists used to publicly say, A hey, Eurolook, it is women who are in charge of homes. And therefore it is they who have contributed to the superstitious, god culturia euro trademark. They are always leaders in such things. It is always women who become possessed by spirits. They have played a big role in making superstitions so powerful. It is the woman who is the real doer. So if women can bring darkness, they can also bring light into our lives. A euro trademark, and men agreed with this. A euro this man, Umbedkar, a euro trademark they said, a euro has come from beyond the seven seas. He is so well educated. He understands things better than any of us. There is a point in what he says. A euro trademark, so then women began to attend meetings even at far off places. They would carry bakris to last them for four or five days. And who looked after their homes? Older women, of course. Their mothers and mothers in law took education extremely seriously. And they participated in all the programs as well. They would just leave their children and homes behind and participate in various programs, such as mortis, forcible entry into temples, hotels, and such other places. They got a lot of encouragement from their men folk as well. And both their young and old family members staunchly stood by them. Baba sent telegrams and asked people to do something. Immediately preparations got underway. My brother was in boarding. He was in the ninth standard, and I was in the sixth standard. I must have been eleven or twelve years of age then. Because of my brother, I always got a chance to participate in these programs. What was the experience like? That was a great struggle. There was constant confrontation with the upper castes. They would say, A Euro these Mahars are rising above themselves. We won't allow them to enter the village. A Euro trademark everything was out of bounds for us. We couldn't Euro trademark t even go to the flour mill. They tried to make life difficult for us. It was slightly different in my own house, though. My father used to manage things somehow. My mother was not allowed to go out of the house. It was he and my brother, both of them activists, who used to get provisions and other household stuff. What about school? All our leaders used to accompany us to school. Babasahiba Euro trademark s words, education is your right, you must go to school a euro, were stamped on our hearts. So there was no question of our not going to school. But once we were in school, we were given a different treatment. We were made to sit in a corner on one side. Ours was a girls euro trademark school. It was actually a Brahmin school since all the teachers and a majority of the students were Brahmins. The teachers used to be awfully worried about our polluting them and harassed us a lot as if we were their enemies. They treated us like lepers, really. They wouldn't euro trademark t even look at us. Our classmates were all upper caste girls and they too used to be afraid of us, constantly worried about our touching and polluting them. They used to scorn us as if we were some kind of despicable creatures. We had no friends among the Brahmin girls. When we went for excursions, they used to offer us food from their lunchboxes but they would never accept anything from us. This must have been around 1945. When did you get married? There are hardly any references to your personal life in the autobiography. Well, I was just 13 when I got married and I was considered too old. I had passed my fourth standard. My husband a Euro trademark s name was Condaba Campbell, and he was a student in my brother's school and stayed in the same hostel. My husband a Euro trademark s family saw me and gave their approval. His family was actually related to our family. They belonged to Nimbir village, near Fultun. Now Baba Saheb had told people that marriages should be performed according to the Gandhav ritual that was quite different from the traditional way of marriage. He told us that there was no need to invite a Brahmin priest. The bride and the groom did not have to tie the Bashinga and the Mundawali. In fact, Babasa have said, a euro don't a euro trademark tea waste for days on the wedding. Save time and money as well. Just one sari for the bride and one pair of new clothes for the groom are good enough. Don't a euro trademark tea invite the Brahmin priest to perform the marriage rites. Let somebody from among your own people do it. And let the marriage be performed at your own chadi. A euro trademark mine was one of the first marriages to be performed in the new manner. After the diksha ceremony, marriages began to be performed according to the Buddhist way. Till then we followed the practice of Gandhar Vivaha that Babasaheb laid down for us. Anyway, for my marriage, my brother wrote the Mangalash Takas that were in praise of Dr. Babasaheb and Bekar Euro trademark s work. After my marriage, we stayed in Fultun. Now, there were some 15 to 16 people living in my husband Euro trademark s house. It was a house that really did not have too much space. Yet, they all stayed together. We too stayed there for some time. Poverty was common to my husband Euro trademark s house and mine. Getting a job was next to impossible. Who would give work to a person who had been educated only up to the fourth or the seventh standard? It was difficult to survive. Now, Dr. Ambedkar used to say, A euro don't a euro trademark t get into jobs. Try to start some small business which you can successfully run in your locality. Don't a euro trademark t start with the business of milk. Who will buy that from you? Your people don't a euro trademark t drink milk, and the upper castes want a euro trademark t buy milk from you. Start with something which you can manage to sell in your own community. A euro trademark. Then I had an idea. Both my husband and I were jobless. 
So I thought, why not begin with something like grapes? There were plenty of farms around and the rate at the time was 5 rupees per kilogram. But you could get 1 kilogram of loose grapes for 8 annas. Poor people who could not afford to buy grapes in bunches would buy these. So we decided to sell loose grapes. I used to go to the farms and buy a basketful of loose grapes. My capital of 8 annas would fetch me 1 rupee or sometimes even more in a day. That was more than 100% of profit. I saved all of it. Gradually, my savings swelled and reached the huge sum of 48 rupees. Then we added vegetables to our merchandise. Gradually, along with vegetables, we added provisions like oil, salt, and such other stuff to our list. This also fetched us a tidy profit. So we decided to expand our business. I told my brother and husband to stock our house with grocery items. In those days, we did not stay in a separate house, but with my husband a Euro trademark S family. We used to sell these things from my Mothra Euro trademark S houses. It was right in front of the chadi. We did not spend any of the money that we earned on food or household expenses. My in-laws helped me a lot. They allowed us to stay in their house and shared whatever meager food they had. In the next three months we bought provisions worth 350 rupees. The quantity was so large that the house literally overflowed with the stuff. There were many Mahar households in Mangal War Path. They all became our customers. Our business picked up very well. Then we decided to live independently but in the same house. That meant a great deal of additional work for me, like cooking and fetching water. I used to get up at 3 a euro trademark clock in the morning and fetch water from the public tap in Mangal War Path. By this time I had two children. There was a canal near our house. I used to wash all our clothes there. Next I would do the cooking. I used to finish everything by 9 in the morning and then go to the shop. Till then my husband would sit at the counter. Thereafter, I attended to the customers and he went off to the market to buy provisions. Did you have any problem in getting provisions? We never had any problems in buying anything. They wouldn't euro trademark tea admit us inside the shop but they did supply us with whatever we wanted. We sort of flourished. I gave birth to 10 children of whom 3 died during childhood. I never went to a hospital. All my babies were born at home. My mother and my mother-in-law would come and help me. What was your mother-in-law with Euro trademark s attitude towards all this? Oh, she was always very supportive. All this was happening for the first time in our community, but she understood this. We used to go to many public meetings, mortis and other agitations. So we used to be away from home, children and the shop. But everyone helped. Besides, we did not allow ourselves to be obligated to anyone. We were quite independent. So we could do whatever we wanted. Both my husband and I were greatly involved in Dr. Babasaheb's movement. Our not having a job was really beneficial for our work because if you have a job, you are tied down. We would simply lock our door and go to attend meetings, participate in agitations and visit various places. Since our shop was in front of the chadi, people who came to the chadi would pay a visit to the shop as well. Many a times people sat in groups there to discuss things. The entire community used to gather at the chadi at night. Their discussions created more awareness in me. Did you instinctively become a leader then? Not really. But I used to do a lot of political and social work outside. You were quite young then, we're in a Euro trademark to you. You were developing as an activist. Did you have any aspirations to leadership? Did you contest elections? Well, about elections. Dot yes, there was the municipality, and there used to be some seats for the backward castes. So people did come with those offers. But then I said, a hey, Euro no, I don't a Euro trademark T want to get involved with that kind of politics. I have to look after my shop, my house and my children. A Euro trademark besides, I was an activist in the movement as well. The municipality was a den of goons and musclemen. People urged me several times to contest the municipality elections, but I didn't euro trademark T want to. Both my husband and I felt that working with those people was not a risk worth taking. Because once you are there, you get involved in many things, and I didn't euro trademark T want anybody to cast aspersions on me. Were there any other women activists at that time who worked along with you? Women who addressed public meetings, organized people? Not really. Women started participating much later, when they became educated. There were very few that worked along with me. We used to address meetings, give speeches. My grandmother was from Mumbai. She had worked with the workers' Euro trademark unions. Then gradually more women began to participate. I must tell you about the women in the Mahila Mundal that Raja Malajiraj Nambakar and his wife Lakshmi Bai had started in Fultun. The Raja had taken the initiative and told the Rani that at least one woman from every Mahar household in Mangal Warpath was to be made a member of the Mahila Mundal. Since my father never allowed my mother to go, I became a member. There were quite a few militant women from our community who became members. They would not hesitate to fight for their rights. They demanded chairs to sit and participated in the deliberations. Your father had no objection to your going out. Then why did he not allow your mother to participate in these activities? Well, I was a school-going girl at that time. But the hold of patriarchy was so strong. In fact, not sending the women out was considered to be a mark of real manhood. A man who didn't a Euro trademark T allow his wife to go out earned respect from the people. A Euro Yukon a Euro trademark TC even the fingernail of his wife, a Euro trademark they would say reverentially. 
My father never sent my mother out for work. But fortunately, he made an exception with me. I always used to be with my brother. How did women from other communities react when you worked with them in the Mahila Mundal? Oh, they welcomed us. When there were programs, they came in a group and made me close the shop. There were a lot of Brahmin, Maratha, Gujarati women in the Mundal. But they never opposed me. Why? Is it because you had the backing of the royal family? Well, not really. You see, times were changing fast. Because of Dr. Ambedkar, many new norms were coming into force. People had to accept them. That made a great difference. Besides, the Raja had told them that they must have our women in the Mundal. Obviously, because of our shop, our contacts and activism, they considered us leaders. This was a great change. So both my husband and I started doing a lot of social work. That became my life. How did you think of writing your autobiography? Laughs. It so happened that I used to sit in the shop at the counter. I used to have plenty of time on my hands. There were books that came along with the old newspapers we bought for packing. Some of them were storybooks and I began to read them. Many contained stories about gods and their great deeds. But gradually I started feeling very angry because the stories were all wrong. Consider for instance the story of Rinda, a Shudra princess. What about this story? One day Narad, Lord Vishnu's celestial follower, paid a visit to Vrinda. He knew that she was going to be the mother of very strong sons. In those days, there was great enmity between the Shudras and the gods. The Shudras never accepted the authority of the gods. They did not even utter their names. So Narad came to Vrinda and praised Lord Vishnu Euro trademark S. prowess. She was a young child and she accepted Lord Vishnu as a great god. She wanted to see Vishnu. So Narad gave her a small image of Vishnu and asked her to worship it. She kept the idol in her room. Her father got very angry with her. But Vrinda did not give up her prayers to Vishnu. Her father tried very hard to convince her that Vishnu was not what she thought him to be. But she wouldn't Euro trademark T give up. She grew up and her father got her married off to Jalian Dar, the son of another Shudra king, Sagar. She did not leave her idol of Vishnu behind. She took it along with her and worshipped it. As usual. Sagar also appealed to her not to worship Vishnu but she did not listen. To him either. She continued her worship of Vishnu. She was an extremely virtuous woman, and that was her strength. Now, because of her virtue, her husband never suffered defeat at the hands of the gods. When he was at war, she would not eat or even drink water till he came back. And Jalu and Dar always returned victorious. The gods were at their witty Euro trademark S end. They just couldn't Euro trademark T defeat Jalu and Dar. Then Nerid realized that it was Rinda Euro trademark S virtue that gave Jalu and Dar such great protection, and that the Shudra king would rule as long as her virtue remained intact. So he went to Vishnu and told him about this. Then when the battle started again, Vishnu came in the form of her husband Jalian Dar and took her to bed. The moment her virtue was lost, her husband was killed, his severed head came and fell on her lap and Vishnu stood before her in his real form. Then Vrinda realized how horribly she had been tricked, she accused. Vishnu of treachery and deceit. Vishnu patted her and said, A euro now let bygones. B bygones. I a euro trademark LL give you a boon. You will eternally be a Saubajayawadi. You will get married to your husband Jalian Dar every year. People will marry you to a round nut representing your husband. Nobody will call you a widow. A euro trademark, since then the custom of performing Tulsi Vivaha came into being, you know. Vrinda is Tulsi. And you have to keep a shalagram to represent Jaila and Dar in the ritual. But since Tulsi is a Shudra, she can't a euro trademark T enter the house. So the marriage of Tulsi has to be performed outside the house, and Tulsi Vrindawan has to be kept outside the house. Northwest One will place it inside their house. When I read this story, I was furious. The story clearly represented how the upper castes had mythologized the repression of Shudra men and women. So I started writing about these women who were repressed. Then I also got some books on women like Pandita Ramabai. Attending Baba's meetings and reading these books gave me an acute sense of the agony many people, especially women, have suffered. Then I thought, I have to express this anger, give vent to my sense of outrage. But merely talking about it will not suffice. How many people can I reach that way? I must write about it. I must proclaim to the world what we have suffered. But how did you begin to write? And when did you get time to write a euro, you had to sit at the counter and take care of things. Oh theta euro trademark s a long story indeed. Look, I reached the shop at 9 in the morning, after which my husband would leave the shop and go to buy things that we required. He used to return only around 4 oh a euro trademark clock. That gave me plenty of time. I began to write, putting into words the suffering of my community. I also joined a library and started borrowing books. Whenever I had a little time, I would furiously make notes. I filled many such notebooks. Writing was a difficult task. I had to take great care that nobody saw me writing. I used to hide the papers under old newspapers. I used to keep my notebooks hidden in places that nobody bothered about, like the uppermost corner of an alcove where all useless things were thrown together. Why did you have to hide your writing? Firstly, because of my husband. He was a good man but like all the men of his time and generation, he considered a woman to be an inferior being. He would not have tolerated the idea that I had taken to writing. I used to be scared of him. 
so I had to hide my writing. You started writing when you were 30 or so, but by the time you published, 20 years had gone by. Did you keep your writing hidden for 20 years? Smiles, well, I had to. So I hid everything I wrote in the most ignored and dusty corners. My son had started going to school when I started to write. So for me he was a knowledgeable, learned man. I used to be scared of both my son and my husband, scared of their reaction. My husband always called me an ignorant woman. I was afraid of his response. So I kept everything hidden away from their eyes for almost 20 years. Then it so happened that Maxine Bernson came to stay in Fulton. Since she was a sociologist working on the scheduled casts, she came to see me for her data collection. I began to go with her on her field visits. In the course of our discussions, I told her about the constructive work I was involved in. I used to invite her for programs like Ambedkar's birth anniversary. Then one day she said, A Euro you have been doing so much work, why don't a Euro trademark to you write about it, a Euro trademark, so I told her that I had done a lot of writing but hadn't a Euro trademark to shown it to anyone. She invited me to her bungalow with my files. I showed her my notebooks. She was working on her doctoral thesis then. She made me read the files every day. She liked what I had written. Then she talked to Vidya Bal, who was working as the editor of the Women Euro Trademark S Magazine Street. And so finally, it was serially printed in Street. Now my Sona Euro Trademark S in laws were in Pune. His father in law happened to see Street, and he was amazed to find my writing in it. He came and congratulated me. I felt very embarrassed. Then some people in my family came to know of this. Even then, I was not ready to tell them more about it. Then Mr. Kulkarni, of Mansonman Publishing House, offered to bring it out as a book, and I had to regularly go and visit him in Pune. Fortunately, my son was then living in Pune, and I used to go under the pretext of visiting him. It was only when the book was published that everybody at home came to know that I was a writer as well. That is the story of my book. What was the reaction of the people from your community when they read it? Oh, they all liked it. No adverse reactions. Not like Daya Pawar Euro trademark S autobiography Baluda, in which he wrote about issues like sex that are not to be openly talked about. Anyway, I even received letters about the book from college students, both boys and girls, who liked it immensely. Did they feel that the memories of oppression were too painful, such as what young girls had to endure when they gave birth to babies? Incidentally, the man girl in Mahatma Philia Euro trademark S school, Muktabai, wrote about similar happenings 150 years ago. Yes, she did. That was the life of our women a Euro, unchanged for hundreds of years. So young people welcomed what I had written. Let us turn to the major question of the political participation of women in the Dalit movement and the subsequent developments. Women joined DR. Ambedkar's movement in such large numbers. What do you think about their participation in the post-Ambedkar Dalit movement? One finds very few women emerging as leaders. Why? You are right. Women played a major role in Dr. Ambedkar Euro trademark S movement. But that Doesna Euro trademark T seemed to have happened later. Baba Saheb passed away in 1956. After his time, there was a great tug of war among the leaders. Everybody wanted to prove himself to be another Ambedkar. This had an adverse impact. People were confused. Who was Baba's heir? The people were left far behind in the ensuing power struggles. Leaders went and camped in Mumbai. Every person had his own camp of sycophants around him. Every person was busy blowing his own trumpet. Let me give you an example. Ramdas Athawail was a young man then, bright and intelligent. He was from the Dalit Panther, the organization that represented the anger of the young men against the established post ambedkar Dalit leadership. People were really impressed and many accepted him as their leader. They thought that only he could implement Baba Euro trademark S agenda. Many. Dalits became his followers. They trusted the Dalit Panther more than the leaders. Of the Republican Party. People felt that old times had been revived. But the upper castes such as the Brahmins, the Marathas and their parties could not tolerate this. They were worried that they would lose their power if the new leadership and the Dalit community became strong. So they played the usual game. Their leaders lured Ramdas away with promises of making him a minister. Dalit Panther became considerably weak. The Republican Party was divided into factions that kept fighting with each other. There was no one left to think about the people and to provide any kind of leadership to the masses. So the same politics continues, Doesna Euro trademark T it. Keep the Dalits down by hook or by crook. Absolutely. In those days, it happened because the Dalits were uneducated. Today this happens because the Dalits are educated. In those days, the whole village kept us down with tactics like refusing to give us water, keeping us at a distance, and through oppression and injustice. Now the educated Dalits are behaving exactly as the upper caste villagers used to behave then. Educated Dalits occupy top positions in the government. Their children enjoy the good life. They are not bothered about what's happening to poor people. Whatever they do, they do only for themselves. The poor Dalits are left where they were. At least they do Euro trademark s what I feel. But don't a Euro trademark to you think the situation is rather different now. Now many Dalit castes, as well as the other marginalized castes have become conscious of their oppression, their rights, their identities. The traditional hierarchies among castes are being challenged, and new alliances are being formed. Dr. Ambedkar had said that the caste system is not only a division of labor but of laborers as well. There seems to be a new awakening about this division among the laborers. 
well, that is happening, and yet the cruelty and inhumanness of the same oppressive system is crossing all bounds. Let me explain. In 1956 Babasaheb embraced Buddhism. The entire Mahar community followed him and became Buddhist. But in this process, other communities were left out. We gave up Hindu religion, the Hindu gods, their worship, etc. But what about the other twelve Balutadars? They remained what they were, that is, Hindus. The Chamhars, Dors, Mangs and many such castes did not change their religion. They do not want to do so. The Buddhists are isolated. So now it is the Buddhists versus the entire village, the entire town, the entire country. What is the solution? I feel that we have to spread the Buddhist religion everywhere. But they will not allow us to do so. It is indeed a very difficult situation. We have been isolated. We will have to fight even if we have to die in this struggle. That seems to be our future. The Hindu religion has become more aggressive and dominant since we became Buddhists. Revivalist tendencies are becoming stronger than ever. There never used to take place so many Satyanarayana pujas before, you know. Now just look at the proliferating religious programs. The Hindus really became more conscious of their religion after Dr. Babasaheb became a Buddhist. Now the Buddhists are deliberately isolated. The media is in the hands of the Hindu fundamentalists. They use it systematically for their own campaigns. We have to face this challenge now. How did the twelve Balutadars behave in those days? What was their attitude? All of them had to coexist. We were all together. There were many castes such as the Shambar, Dor, Kashti, and others who had been exploited by the upper castes for their selfish ends. We were outside the village, they were inside it. But we were all Shudras. Actually even the Marathas were Shudras. But the Brahmins were so clever, they took all these castes inside the village according to their own needs and very systematically built a hierarchy amongst them. And the bravest caste of the Mahars, who were the original inhabitants of this land, was yoked to their cart. Because they were most scared of this caste, they wanted to keep them permanently oppressed to avert the possibility of their becoming strong again. Except for the Matang caste, all were allowed to stay in the village. They also created a sense of hierarchy amongst us. The Chamhars used to scorn us. We considered the doors to be beneath us. And the Mathangas were considered to be beneath us. That was how we were taught to think. We kept on treating them like that and they remained distant. Why didn't a Euro trademark T the Mathangas join you and convert to Buddhism? For many reasons. Firstly, they didn't a Euro trademark T question the Hindu religion. Secondly, they were far less in number. There would only be a couple of houses of the Mathangas in the village. They didn't a Euro trademark T have the power to refute Hinduism. So they sought safety in sticking close to the Hindu religion by remaining within the fold. That is why we find ourselves alone now in spite of the fact that we are one of the largest communities. What other things did you write about? In Dr. Babasaheb's movement, Jalsa was a popular form of cultural and political action, wasn't a Euro trademark tea it. Did you write any Jalsa? Laughs. No, not really. I used to write songs though. But not for the Jalsas. It was mostly men who used to participate in the Jalsas. Women came together for celebrating festivals like Nagapanchami and the Budhawada, but the songs would be about the movement and about Dr. Babasaheb. Those were the times of bitter feud between the followers of Gandhiji and us. But they used to come for our programs. Some of them also came for programs like Busti Safai. At the time of the round table conference, Gandhiji had claimed that he was the leader of the Dalits. But then Ambedkar challenged him and appealed to all his people to send telegrams which we all did. It rained telegrams at that time and Gandhiji and his followers had to eat their words and accept that only Dr. Ambedkar was the true leader of the Dalits. Did you ever participate in the programs organized by the Congress? Never. Dr. Babasaheb had told us that the Congress party was a burning house, entering that house would not help our community. Then we started looking at them as our enemies. But now the situation has changed a lot in the post Ambedkar period. Our militancy is gone. Our leaders are hankering after money. There is no talk of any struggle now. People have become disorganized. They are divided into so many groups, the Vi group, Athawail group, so on and so forth. But people did come together at the time of the riddles controversy, one, did Euro trademark T they? Yes, only something like that will bring all these groups together. What do you see today as the major problems of Dalits? Consider migration of Dalits from villages to cities. Many people migrate in search of work to the cities from the villages. Yet, quite a sizable number are left in villages as well. If there are only seven to eight houses of the Buddhists, the village can press sunrise them, but when there are twenty-five to thirty houses, then generally there is far less pressure. Of course, in cities like Pune, Mumbai, even Fulton, there is no question of anybody trying to apply pressure on them. But then, how many have access to education? How many have jobs? Basically, our people are still quite poor. And now there are so many divisions. Big versus small, Ambedkarites versus non-Ambedkarites, high culture versus low culture. But there is one thing I must say. Today, untouchability is not so big a problem as reservation is. Theta Euro trademark is a major problem. But any struggle requires a good leader. Dr. Ambedkar, it is true, had said, a Eurodona Euro trademark T run behind jobs, get into business. A Euro trademark, but in spite of so many banks and loan facilities, how many of these things reach the poor? Take government schemes for instance, they don't a Euro trademark T reach us. 
We have to face problems of superstitions, corruption, liquor, addictions like that. There is no control on these. Do you think women suffer more? Yes, I think so. Now take for instance, reservation. Many illiterate women from communities like Danagar, Ramoshi, etc., have the opportunity to become village sarpanches. But how many women are allowed to function meaningfully? The upper caste goons will never allow them to work. They control everything. Women are still slaves. And it is not just Dalit women, I see around me many women from both upper and lower castes. All women are facing problems. Especially, women from the villages. Their oppression dos na euro trademark t come to light. All cases of rape are suppressed for fear of family honor, pressures from the dominant communities and political parties. Women work very hard and yet face so many problems in spite of a slight improvement in the financial position. You have done so much work in your life, contributed to the social and educational development of people from many oppressed communities, you are running an ashramshala in Nimbir for them. You are trying to reduce their suffering. Well, the school in Nimbir is a real achievement, there are 250 students now in my school. Theta Euro trademark s what Dr. Ambedkar used to tell us to do. Suffering has been a constant companion for us. Did you suffer in your personal life as well? In my personal life, I had to suffer like many other women. But how do you go and talk about it when everyone is suffering? In my personal life there were some issues. In those days, men always wanted to control women. It was quite common for a husband to beat his wife because he doubted her faithfulness. And I was na Euro trademark t an exception. Once we went to Mumbai to attend a meeting, we traveled in a general compartment that was very crowded and some young men happened to stare at me. My husband immediately suspected me and hit me so hard that my nose started bleeding profusely. But people do look at you in the train, don't a Euro trademark t they. How do you stop them from doing so? But there was no point in explaining this to him. He would na Euro trademark t listen. We did not stay for the program either. The same evening we returned and he was so angry that he kept hitting me in the train. Such things were so common. All my life I had to face this violence. How did you endure it? Where did you get the strength? He would beat me up for some flimsy reason. Actually he used to be very suspicious. I tried very hard to prove my innocence. I used to cry, explain, plead with him. Then for a few days everything would be normal. Then again after a week or so, something would happen and suspicion would raise its head once again. I had to pass through a series of such things constantly. In fact this was the life most women led. Every woman knew it by heart. Every woman tried to negotiate her way out of these hardships. Giving up Oni Euro trademark s husband and marrying another Wudna Euro trademark t solved the problem because the A Euro husband s Euro trademark would be the same in every man. So I decided that I want a Euro trademark t leave. I wanted to do something constructive and that I would come what may. I never retaliated. I used to say, A Euro let him say whatever he wants, nobody else says it except him. Eat a Euro trademark s ok. A Euro trademark, all the others in the society had good words for me. And I had. The support of all our men and women. That was very precious for me. That was my strength, really. Do you feel it was the fear of this violence, the fear of the suspicion in the husband's mind, that kept women away from staking claims to political leadership? Absolutely. Women used to be afraid of even looking up at their husbands. Fortunately I was from Fulton, people here knew me, I had the backing of everybody a Euro, my father, my brother, people in the community. So I could achieve something. Did you ever tell your father or brother or friends about this? No, never. I never discussed my suffering with anybody. I bore it all alone. Sometimes, I used to feel desperate. I used to feel like giving up everything. I had an old uncle. He was blind in one eye. He used to tell us stories of Padavrata women from mythology. Maybe those stories influenced me a lot. I think that they also gave me strength to go through all this. My mother-in-law, sister-in-law, they were also good to me. Except for my husband, no one else behaved like this. It is the man who suppresses the woman in our society. This was not just a relic of the past. Even after independence anything would cause the husband to suspect his wife. Now suppose a woman was cleaning pots and pans at the front door because there was northwest other place where she could do it, the direction in which she threw the dirty water might be taken as a signal of some sort to a lover. Then the husband would attack his wife, a hey, why did you throw? Water in that particular direction. Who was standing there? Who was the signal? 4. Where will you meet your lover, a hey, euro trademark the poor woman would lose her power of speech. She would be too scared to even utter a word in self-defense. When she carried two or three pitchers of water on her head, she had to support them with her hand. Even that raised suspicion, a euro right hand or left hand. Was that a signal? Why did you bend your hand in that way, a euro trademark it was an impossible question. How could she answer this? Can you imagine how women must have suffered? But they faced all this and did so much. Did a euro trademark to you ever feel like writing about all this? Well, he was my husband after all. I spent so many years of married life with him. Besides I had my community to consider, our lack of education, progress. It would be so demeaning. Besides this was the fate of most women, I was na Euro trademark t an exception. So why write about it, I felt. Besides, the root cause of this was the male ego. 
Look, husbands then didn't Euro trademark T have anything else to do. No education, no jobs, even food they had to beg for. Their male ego gave them some sense of identity, a Euro I am a man, I am superior to women, I am somebody. If the whole village tortures us, we will torture our women. A Euro trademark fathers used to teach their sons to treat their wives as footwear. A wifey a Euro trademark s place was near her husband a Euro trademark s feet. That was their way of asserting that they too were somebody. Now of course, things are changing. Because of education, jobs, there is a sense of achievement. Their ego is sustained by that success. Anyway, for me, the suffering of my community has always been more important than my own individual suffering. I have identified myself completely with my people. And therefore Gina Amucha was the autobiography of my entire community. One of the riddles controversy was generated with the publication of an essay written by Dr. Ambedkar entitled Riddles of Rama and Krishna where Dr. Ambedkar has severely criticized the Hindu gods Rama and Krishna. This essay was published as a chapter in the fourth volume of Dr. Ambedkar's collected writings published by the government of Maharashtra in 1987. Madhav the then editor of a Marathi daily called Loksata wrote in his column, Chaffer, that Dr. Ambedkar had maligned Hindu gods and had hurt the feelings of the Hindus. Bal Thakri, chief of the Shiv Sena, a Hindu fundamentalist organization, demanded that the controversial chapter be deleted from the fourth volume of Ambedkar's writings. Dalit masses, the left and other progressive sections in the society, joined hands to counter the attack of the Hindutva forces. Huge protest marches were taken out all over Maharashtra. The Congress Government had to retain the chapter and the controversy died after a while. It is Interesting to note that this controversy took place against the backdrop of the government of India's ban on Salman Rushdie's satanic verses and the Ramjan Mabumi Andolan started in 1986 by the Vishwa Hindu Parishad. Afterward,